Shin's suspicion that Satram is still alive is confirmed when Satram returns to Shin's house with August and their friends through the gate portal. Merlin and Melinda see their grandson bringing many friends to their house. Shin explains that he was blocked by fans in front of the school gate, so he brought his friends using the gate to meet Merlin. Thor tells Merlin that they are being trained by Shin to control magic energy. The students want to ask Merlin about the mechanism of magic, but Merlin firmly states that he doesn't know how magic works. Merlin has taught Shin to imagine magic into reality, thus making spell recitations effective. With Merlin's explanation, the students begin to understand. Shin then invites August and the others to retrieve their weapons from Mar's father's shop. After August retrieves his sword, he asks for permission to make a similar sword with a different design for the kingdom's army. Shin doesn't mind as long as Tony approves, as the idea comes from him. August also reveals that the palace forces will soon be at war with the Busvia kingdom. He asks Shin not to get involved in the kingdom's military affairs because it's dangerous for him. Shin firmly tells August that she will defend and protect her beloved friend, therefore Shin decides to join the war against the kingdom of Blusvia. Shin is shown in the Blusvia kingdom as she intercepts King Blusvia in his chamber and declares that she will end Shin's life, and indeed Satram ruthlessly slaughters the noble in his palace until he is lifeless. Several days later, the Ursul kingdom's forces arrive at the location, visibly devastated by the demon army's attack. Dominic and the soldiers are greeted by Oliver Satram at the site. Satram expresses gratitude to both generals as they helped in annihilating the population of the Blusvia kingdom. Dominic realizes that behind the ongoing war lies Satram's mischief. Satram calmly acknowledges his actions for instigating the war between the two kingdoms. Satram prepares human demon troops to confront Dominic and his soldiers, but Dominic and his troops retreat due to being outnumbered, returning to the Ursuld kingdom. Dominic reports to King Dicion that Satram is still alive. The kingdom is in a dilemma upon learning that Satram, the bandit, is alive after the meeting ends. Teacher Marcus announces to the students that Satram is indeed alive and in Bolivia. The teacher explains that they are unaware of Satram's intentions, hence the kingdom doesn't know what strategy to prepare to attack Satram. The teacher firmly urges the students to level up to the next stage, emphasizing the need for self-defense against potential threats. Hearing the teacher's explanation, the students start to feel anxious as they are not used to physical training, they have solely relied on magic for self-defense. While the teacher demands the students to enhance their physical strength as knights, Sicily asks if Shin was trained by knights. Shin answers that Mitchell used to give her rigorous physical training, surprising all students to see Shin, trained by the holy knights. Shin doesn't understand her friend's implication, surely she was trained by Michelle, which is why she could enhance her physical strength. Subsequently, the joint training to capture demons begins. The knights and the wizards unite to defeat the demon. The knights seem to underestimate the wizards as they are not as physically strong as them. The joint team proceeds to the scene riding in the mobiles, the knight team introduces themselves to the wizard team. The wizard team asks the knights if they have ever defeated demons. Miranda is annoyed by the knights' underestimation and explains that if they keep quarreling, both the wizard and the knight teams will perish. Miranda insists they are stronger than the wizards. Prince August mediates the debate and requests not to argue during the demon capture training. Prince August wants to see the knights defeat the demons without the wizard's assistance. Kraze says he will comply with Prince August's orders. Shortly after, Shin is greeted by Saik and Kraze, who are participating in the joint training against demons. Chris and Saik are very popular, having many fans. Prince August explained to Saik and Chris that he asked the knight troops to intercept the demon army without the assistance of witches after listening to their reasons. Kraze then asked the knights to be at the forefront to slaughter the wild demon pigs attacking the knights ferociously, and they were overwhelmed. The knights fell while fighting against these wild demon pigs, but bravely, like a warrior, Shin managed to incapacitate the wild demon pig, brutally severing its head. The knights were astonished by Shin's heroic and overpowering action. Saik then began his brief speech to the knights, urging them to realize their shortcomings because fundamentally, the knight students were weak, and they had yet to familiarize themselves with the actual battlefield terrain. The knights began to realize their arrogance. Sicily treated the wounded knights, making them sentimental. The knight students began to seek Sicily's attention, making Shin jealous. Suddenly, Chris felt the presence of a demon aura nearby and asked the students to prepare to intercept it. The students reported to Senior Sake that hundreds of demons would attack them. Shin then resumed his heroic actions, asking the students to take cover while he alone would stop the hundreds of demons. Shin utilized his god-level abilities, swiftly annihilating the demons in the blink of an eye. After that, the hundreds of demons vanished, defeated. Juliet began to inquire about her Romeo, and they exchanged sentimental feelings. Miranda thought the two were officially dating, but they were still shy with each other. Later on, they continued their journey. 
Chris became curious about what Shin taught his study group at school, and Shin said he taught magic like Merlin's teachings to his friends. August warned Chris not to dig deeper into the information and leak it to the military. August stated that Shin taught magical energy control to the students. August then summoned Sicily and Maria to practice controlling magic, following Shin's teachings. The two women performed their actions using protective magic, leaving Chris amazed at the thickness of their protection. Maria told Chris that her protection was still thin, with a radiant face, impressing Chris with her magical strength. Next, the students gathered at the Capitol Gate after their joint training in the forest. Shin and his friends gathered to recount their actions when they defeated the demons in the nearby forest. Several days later, the magic students began their actions smoothly without any hindrance. Shin and his friends yielded excellent results from their training because the magic students' progress looked promising and made them stronger. August gathered Shin and his friends to listen to important information. August informed his friends that demons had reached the Sedan Empire and the nobles had been slaughtered. This incident was not widely known yet. August asked the witches to prepare their strength to slaughter the demons. Shin realized that it was Satrom's doing. Then, Shin planned to hold a magic training camp for the magic students who seemed happy with the exercises Shin would arrange. After the summer break, Shin and his friends would start training in the valley area. Then, the students would return home after the joint training ended, and the camp training days would arrive. Merlin and Melinda joined the students as their supervisors. The group of magic students rode horse-drawn carriages to the campsite. After a while, Shin and the others arrived in Cloud City and were welcomed by the Sicily family. They decided to rest at Sicily's residence and spend the night there. The men gathered in the hot springs to relax their bodies. Merlin thanked August and the others for being his grandson's friends. August and his friends were very grateful to know Shin and they were happy to be with him. Shin was deeply moved and thanked his grandfather for blessing him with friends. The grandfather couldn't help but shed tears of joy at his grandson's emotions. Meanwhile, in the women's bathhouse, the ladies were busy with body treatments. They saw Melinda looking very charming despite her age. Melinda said her beauty secret came from a device made by Shin for her. The woman asked Melinda to borrow the device, and Melinda graciously allowed the girls to use it. Next, magic control training began, with the students being trained directly by the master to control their magical powers. Meanwhile, Melinda trained the students in magic spells. Shin was relieved to see the students being trained by the professionals, and the magic students progressed with the help of Merlin and Melinda. Shin continued to Prince August, who asked Shin to open the gate so he could return to the palace. Shin complied with August's request, and they returned there. August saw Alice and May in the palace and welcomed them. Alice was August's fiancée, while May was the prince's younger sister. Alice grumbled because August had left her and went camping alone. May also scolded August for not taking her along. May was a big fan of Melinda, Shin's grandmother. August forbade them from joining because the camp was very dangerous. King Decion then asked August to take Alice and May with him because they would be protected by Merlin and Melinda. At the king's request, August decided to take them both. Shin was shocked to learn that August already had a fiancé after returning from the kingdom. Shin and the others had a meal together. August suggested Shin confess to Sicily because they liked each other. Shin was afraid his feelings wouldn't be reciprocated. But because of August's advice, he started to bravely express his feelings. Upon arriving at his residence, Shin thought about his feelings for Sicily and took a walk to look at the stars at night to calm his emotions. Shin then saw Sicily at the hut and approached her. Shin and Sicily looked shy and excited because of their emotions. Shin confessed his feelings like a gentleman and then proposed to Sicily. Shin's feelings were reciprocated because Sicily loved him deeply. The two finally united and were about to kiss. But it didn't happen because the troublemakers suddenly appeared, disrupting the romantic scene of Romeo and Juliet that had just begun. Shin announced to the students that they were officially dating. Melinda approved of Shin and felt that her grandson was very gentlemanly. The next day, Shin decided to acknowledge their relationship and also sought approval from Sicily's parents. Shin approached Sicily's parents and expressed his feelings. Sicily's father liked Shin and then gave his approval. Sicily's mother told Shin that since they were both from noble families, they should think about their future. Shin should be willing to engage with Sicily as a sign of commitment. Shin firmly agreed to his future and law's conditions. Emotional scenes unfolded and they began practicing magic again the students appearing stronger and more confident in their magic practice. Switching to another location, Satram asked Miria about the state of their empire. Miria explained that the imperial region was currently experiencing a food crisis. Satram said it was time for them to take action. Returning to Shin and Sicily, who were busy dealing with the engagement issue, Shin informed Melinda and Merlin that they were planning to get engaged. Melinda asked Sicily to introduce them to her parents. Merlin and Melinda arrived at Cloud's house and were welcomed by Sicily's parents. Melinda got straight to the point, expressing her desire to see Sicily's parents' response to their granddaughter. 
But it turned out they liked Shin not because of his status as the hero's grandson, but because of Shin's gentlemanly demeanor. The issue was resolved, and Shin and Sicily's relationship received the blessings of both sides. Next, Shin and Sicily held an engagement party at Cloud Shin's residence. Shin looked extremely handsome, while Sicily appeared very cute yet elegant. There were heartwarming scenes as the two of them were very happy. Shin and Sicily entered the engagement party room, attended by family members and the king's magic students, turning Seon into a witnesses of the engagement of two people deeply in love. All the attendees raised their glasses to celebrate the happiness of Shin and Sicily as a young couple in the magic school. The scene shifted to Satram's new residence. Zaz succeeded in executing his plan to provoke conflict between the common people and the nobles, intending to control the commoners into becoming demon-like beings who would slaughter the nobles. Satram was indeed cunning, using humans as his weapons. The demon-like beings wanted to destroy the nobles and establish their kingdom. Satram, with indifference, allowed the demon-like beings to fulfill their desires. Essentially, Satram's main goal was to overthrow the empire. Once the empire fell, Satram no longer cared about anything else. Miria then asked why Satram harbored such hatred towards the empire. Satram recounted the reasons to Miria and Zess. Initially, Satram was a kind-hearted noble who always defended the common people. However, his nature was despised by members of the royal court and other nobles. Satram was framed by the nobles in the royal court to become hostile towards the common people. The nobles played their roles well, as did the members of the royal court. Satram received an invitation to a meeting in the city, leaving his pregnant wife behind. Unfortunately, the invitation brought disaster to his wife. The nobles framed Satram, accusing him of being a thief of girls from the commoner class. The nobles further incited the commoners by provoking his relationship with them. The trick worked because the commoners, overwhelmed with anger, rioted and burned Satram's house along with his wife and child inside. Upon returning home, Satram saw his wife and child devoured by the flames. Satram went berserk, seeking revenge on the commoners and nobles for brutally murdering his family. Satram vowed to avenge his family in the kingdom of Blusvia and destroy its people. Satram's mission was successful, bringing him peace after avenging the suffering he had endured for so long. After hearing Satram's life story, Zeus felt that his master no longer had any ambition. Zeus wanted to manipulate Satram into opposing Shin and destroying the Irsuld kingdom. Zeus sent Lauren as his spy, and they would collaborate. Moving on to the kingdom of Irsul, Prince August was appointed by King Decian to ascend to the position of crown prince. Not long after, soldiers reported that the kingdom of Swith was being attacked by demons. Crown Prince August tried to reassure his people, stating that their group would eradicate these demon forces. August asked Shin to deliver his speech to the people. Shin, feeling a bit nervous, told the citizens that they were a demon-fighting force called the Ultimate Magicians, and they would hunt down the demons. He asked the people not to panic and to wait for good news from them. After that, Shin and the others used flying magic to reach the land of Swift. Upon arriving, they saw the area in chaos, with the inhabitants slaughtered by demon-human hybrids. Shin and the others fought against these demon-humans using the techniques they had learned. Similarly, Thor and Julius were seen defeating the demon-humans. Thor tried to locate Satram and ask the demon-humans, but they didn't respond. Instead, they expressed their resentment towards the nobles who had oppressed the common people, stating that after turning into demons, they could easily defeat the nobles. Julius disagreed with the demon humans thinking and tried to incapacitate them. The magic students fought against the demon humans in Swift, dispersing to stop the increasing population of demon humans. Returning to action, they successfully defeated the demon humans in the city. Shin appeared very powerful, able to eliminate the demon humans with his magic. Lauren followed Shin, realizing his immense strength and finding no weakness in him. The ultimate magicians managed to defeat the demon humans, and the city was safe again, albeit severely damaged. Although the country of Swift was heavily devastated, some citizens managed to survive the incident. On the other hand, Ziz did not anticipate Shin's extraordinary power would save the country. Ziz planned to ask Lauren to step back and devise a new plan to defeat Shin. Ziz, not out of ideas, invited Miria to join his plan. Miria complied with Ziz's request and slaughtered the soldiers of the Swift Kingdom. The scene then shifts to the refugee camp, where Sicily is busy treating the injured. With her healing magic, Sicily provided first aid to those who fell victim to the demon-human incident. On the other hand, Shin sensed a terrifying killing aura in the area. The ultimate magicians then arrived and confronted Miria's formidable attack. Miria managed to defeat the magic students, rendering them powerless against her. Shin then arrived, unleashing his immense rage, causing an explosion to attack Miria. Miria managed to escape from Shin's deadly attack. Shin felt relieved seeing his friends survive and his enemy escape. This incident left Shin extremely upset and angry, making August ponder what Satram truly desired. 
The ultimate magicians then returned to the refugee camp to assist Sicily. The other students tried to heal the injured victims. Shin searched for Sicily and found her frustrated because she couldn't heal her patients. Shin comforted Sicily, promising to heal the man. He began his actions as a doctor to treat critically ill patients. Behind the wall, August observed Shin, feeling that Shin was incredibly strong and realizing that he would never be able to match Shin's power, which surpassed even senior wizards. After several hours, Shin succeeded in healing the critically ill man. Witnessing the event, Sicily felt utterly useless and constantly dependent on Shin. She felt depressed about her own extremely weak powers, unable to save others. Nevertheless, Shin calmly tried to cheer up the distraught Sicily. He showed her the people Sicily had saved. The townsfolk gathered to express their heartfelt gratitude because Sicily had saved their lives. They bestowed upon Sicily the title of Holy Savior. Sicily fell silent, feeling grateful for having saved many lives. Following the successful rescue incident, August also received recognition from King Swift, along with other companions honored by the Kingdom of Swift. August informed King Swift that the incident in their country felt unsettling due to the absence of the demon human leader, Satrom, in Swift. August took the initiative to propose an alliance with the Kingdom of Swift, which the kings deemed beneficial for defeating the demon humans. Upon King Swift's acceptance of the proposal, August arranged a meeting between the two kingdoms. Ultimate Magician returned to the Kingdom of Arsal and reported the rescue results to King de Sion. August conveyed the alliance made with King Switch to King de Sion, who handed over the matter of the alliance between the two kingdoms to August as he was the crown prince. August and the members of Ultimate Magician bid farewell to the king to continue their mission. Elsewhere, Zeez and Lauren were reprimanded by Satrum for acting alone without his approval. Zeez apologized to Lord Satrum for his carelessness in not obeying his orders. Satrum laughed heartily, enjoying the spectacle created by Zeez and the others. Since Zeez and the others had been defeated, Satrum would take over to confront Shin. Satrum asked Miria if the preparations he requested had been successful, to which Miria assured him that she would give her best. Returning to August, who was bidding farewell to the king to lead his troops on the alliance mission with King Swift, Shin also bid farewell to Grandpa Merlin and Grandma Melinda to assist August and the others. The heroic couple gave their blessings and support. August and the others flew with magic to reach the Kingdom of Swift. Along the way, Alice complained about August's closeness to Shin during their mission. Alice expressed her jealousy at her fiancé's closeness to Shin, so she decided to accompany August to always be by his side. August stated that he liked his sweetheart, while Shin was his friend. Alice laughed at successfully teasing the crown prince. Shin then appeared awkward listening to Alice's jealousy towards him, being a normal guy and not interested in August. Sicily then approached Shin to change Alice's mind about her sweetheart. Shin never saw Sicily with him and looked very happy. The ultimate magician's team will carry out their mission together and appear very cohesive again in front of Merlin and also Melinda, who seemed to be alone. They were about to start a new chapter together but were interrupted by the kids who suddenly appeared at the gate. The children were making noise in Merlin's house, which made Melinda very angry and she asked them to be quiet, and the story ended here.